On November 15th, Waynesboro experienced a severe ice storm that was somewhat unexpected. We had heard that it was going to be freezing rain and kind of a mix of crummy weather that morning, but changing over to rain. So we were optimistic that we would get the bad stuff out of the way and then it would just turn to rain. Uh, the outreach department in particular was very focused on the weather because it was the day before our big three-day annual conference and we were expecting about 240 people to come to our conference here in Waynesboro and we were very busily preparing for that. Uh, Raina and Alex and I uh, were busy making several trips over to the Best Western to prepare for that. Uh, as we were doing that, we were noticing that the weather was not getting better, but was progressively getting worse. As we were trying to figure out what to do about that, we heard that a tree had fallen on Maggie the Peregrine Falcon's enclosure. Uh, the ice that had been going on had just accumulated so much that a lot of the trees started getting quite heavy in the afternoon and I remember standing in my office holding something holding some conference folders in my hand and Peach was running down the hallway and said uh, a student just saw a tree fall on Maggie's enclosure um, so I remember literally dropping what I had in my hands, grabbing my glove, and running outside. I was alarmed at first uh, because that's never a great thing to uh, suffer enclosure damage, but when I actually went outside and saw what had happened, it, it was beyond my expectations. I was envisioning a tree fell on top of her enclosure and maybe it was a little banged up and that wasn't great. but. Uh, the reality was a tree had fallen through her enclosure, had crushed the roof, had demolished a side of the enclosure, and uh, it, it was a very significantly large tree. It was probably between 80 and 100 feet tall, and the entire thing had uprooted itself. Uh, it was right behind her enclosure, and it just came down through the wall, through the roof, uh, kept going, hit another enclosure roof, and then also hit our perimeter gate. And it just gave way with all of the weight of the ice that was on the limbs. Uh, and I think because of all of the rain and moisture that we've had this summer, the whole root system weakened. Uh, it's still very startling to me since all of this was, all of this is the part that was underground. Um, it was scary enough to see all of the tree limbs falling down <laughs> all around us. There's something particularly scary about uh, when a tree just sort of gives up and comes up by the root ball. Uh, so at that point I experienced a lot of emotions all at one time. Um, I thought about throwing up, I thought about starting to cry, um, but then thought that I really need to uh, buck up and I better get in there and, and get Maggie, who was still in the enclosure. Uh, when I first approached, she was on one of her perches and then she hopped down to the ground. She seemed a little confused by what was happening, but uh, was mostly calm, thankfully. Uh, Maggie was initially on her cliff perch which is very close to the roof now. Uh, and then she jumped down on the ground at one point. Uh, when I came in the back of the enclosure, I had my keys on me because I thought I would be unlocking the door to go in, uh, not realizing that I would actually be walking through the back wall. The, there was just a giant hole in the wall of her enclosure, so I was gonna need to step over and around this tree, through the wall, and uh, crawl under a bunch of stuff to get to her. Um, as I was starting to do that, I realized she had many, many different escape routes and very easily could have flown through the roof or the wall in a lot of different locations. So I yelled out to the staff that I needed a few people with handling gloves and some nets just to be on standby in case she tried to make a break for it. 
Uh, so Ernesto and Kelsey uh, got closer and they had gloves and a net. Uh, I was able to crawl in through the enclosure, um, crawl under this tree and under all the roof debris and um, approached Maggie toward the back of her enclosure. And she was starting to get a little agitated. Uh, I knew she wasn't going to just happily, willingly step up on the glove uh, like everything was normal. She is definitely a bird who is used to routines and a chain of behaviors that she has to go through whenever I get her out. Uh, so fortunately, Kelsey was nearby with a net and Kelsey was somehow able to stand on the outside of the enclosure, but stick the net on the inside of the enclosure to try and herd Maggie toward the wall. And that was very helpful in keeping her safe and making sure she wasn't escaping. And once she was Kind of contained to a smaller area, then I was able to reach into the net and have Maggie step up on my glove. <laughs> Looking at it from this angle, it still seems unbelievable that we all went through that together. Um, I, the tree was here and taking up quite a lot of room, so I remember having to climb over the tree and head around that way to come back here. So Kelsey must have been standing here with the net on the inside. Um, but as you can probably see, Maggie very easily could have chosen to fly out of all of these escape routes. There were so many escape routes. I was terrified that she was going to just pop out of that enclosure and then we would be going on a prolonged pursuit through the woods trying to chase down this bird who can fly. Uh, so once I had her Jesses in hand, I realized I was going to have to just get her out uh, without additional equipment, which is not not ideal since that's not the, the safest thing. Um, so I had her on my left hand on my glove. Uh, I was holding onto her Jesses with my right hand just to make sure she wasn't going to slip out uh, and escape. And, uh, and then from there I had to crawl uh, on my knees under the tree and under the roof uh, as it's raining and sleeting and continuing to do all that stuff. Um, and was able to safely make it to the wall and Ernesto was able to help me up and over the tree again to get out. Um, Maggie was fairly well behaved through all of that. Uh, once she was on my glove, she was very, very quiet, which is not, not normally like her. I think she was probably uh, a little overwhelmed by everything that was happening uh, from that experience. Uh, once we got out of the enclosure, it, at that point of the day, it was like Mother Nature had set a timer and just all at once, trees and limbs were just falling all around us. So it was getting progressively worse outside. Uh, it was very loud out there, hearing limbs cracking left and right just all around us. Uh, but I was able to get her into a crate and tucked away inside. And then all of us were starting to evacuate all of our other education animals. Uh, after I got Maggie out, um, I, I feel like I was in sensory overload of, uh, I was relieved to have her on the glove. I was panicking about everything else that was happening and realizing we needed to evacuate everyone. While I love and care for all of our education animals very much, I think we all know that we tend to develop our favorites. And for me, she's it. So hearing and then seeing that this tree had demolished her enclosure was pretty much my worst case scenario. Uh, once she was settled into her crate inside, I feel like I breathed for the first time since all of that happened. And I felt pretty shaky at that point. Um, there wasn't a lot of time to dwell on that though because we had to evacuate all of our other education birds and our opossums. Uh, so we were dealing with something like 15, 16 animals that we had to get inside and it was fairly chaotic. Um, I could feel myself uh, wanting to cry multiple times, um, particularly any time I looked at Reyna, uh, <laughs> as we would pause and look at each other and realize what was happening. But I think it, there also just wasn't time for it. We had to keep pressing on until we had everyone safe inside. 
the Maggie Grayson Buttercup Complex. It's one building uh, that houses three different birds separately. Uh, that is totally ruined, uh, <laughs> crushed by that tree. We have to rebuild. And in the meantime, Maggie and Grayson and Buttercup have to live elsewhere. So we've set them up in patient enclosures and uh, they'll be there probably for the next couple months. Uh, Maggie seems to be adapting just fine in her new enclosure. Uh, I'm very thankful to our volunteers and our rehab staff who very quickly tried to get things set up for her. We're having to just kind of reset our entire routine with new perches and a new space, but she's doing well.